What's going on everyone, my name is Tom from Dread Labs and today we're going to teach you about masks. Alright guys, so this video I wanted to do for a while now because sometimes I do live streams where I do some quick stuff with masks and some people just immediately get confused quite a bit. And also when I teach classes in real life I notice that some people still uh, sometimes really have to wrap their head around how Photoshop masks really work. Uh, so that's why I wanted to give you this video, basically like an in-depth view of the possibilities of masks, how they actually work, and how you can manipulate them and adjust them to a lot of things you might not know that this uh, function is capable of in Photoshop, really. Alright, let's start with the basics. Uh, in here I have in Photoshop a picture from Unsplash. I'll put a link in the description, and if I do not, you can remind me in the comments and get angry at me. Anyways, uh, I'm gonna bring my layer menu up here on the right, uh, because that's very important when using masks. So if you take a closer look at the layer menu here, the thumbnail right next to the image here is what can be considered a mask in Photoshop. Basically, the rule of Photoshop mask is when it's dark, it's invisible, and when it's white, it's visible. So as you can see here in the thumbnail, we drew out a black line through our picture. And as you can see here in the Photoshop uh, artboard itself, uh, this is where the invisible line starts coming in. And basically underneath we can put a layer with something else. For example, let's just fill this up with a solid color. And you can see that there's basically a hole in the picture now. That's just how masks work. So from now onward, I'm gonna talk about some more specific things about masks. So if this is super new to you, I would suggest watching another video because I really want to go into uh, the more in-depth advanced stuff about masks. So with that out of the way, I'm gonna give you guys some shortcuts. Before you wanna manipulate a mask, always be sure that you can select them here in the uh, layer menu. So as you can see, once I click the mask, there is now a white border around it, basically meaning if we use our brush right now, it's gonna be affecting the mask instead of the actual layer. All right, so there's a couple more things we can do by clicking on this thumbnail. For example, when I'm holding shift on my keyboard and I'm clicking the mask here, I'm gonna make it uh, disabled. As you can see, there's now a red cross through the thumbnail here, basically um, showing me what this image would look like if the mask wouldn't be applied. And if we hold shift on our keyboard and click again, it's gonna return. So another really important one is viewing what the actual mask look like. So basically you're gonna switch your canvas here to what your mask will look like. And you can do that by holding Alt or Option if you're on a Mac. Uh, hold this button and then click the thumbnail. And as you can see, this is basically the mask of my file here. Uh, don't worry about this to the right, this is because I'm using artboards. Anyways, as you can see, uh, this is the line that I drew with a brush. Uh, and if we hold Alt or Option on the keyboard and click on the thumbnail again, we'll switch back. So that's a very important one because this will give you a little bit more uh, of an overview on what you're actually doing to your masks uh, when you learn the techniques I'm gonna teach you in this video. All right, a couple more. Um, so I'm gonna just right click and delete this mask for now. And in this other layer, I have this text here. So another really easy one, uh, you've probably already noticed, but you can actually make a mask super easy from a selection. For example, we have this text layer here and I wanna select the text here. So what I'm gonna do is hold control on my keyboard or command if you're on a Mac. And if you hover your mouse over the thumbnail on the right here, you can see that the mouse starts changing. So when we click this, we make an automated selection of uh, the texture. So now if we go to the mountains and I'm just gonna go drag my layer menu out here. Uh, so now with the selection and I'm gonna click on the mask button here. Uh, you probably won't see anything yet, but that's because we have the hello layer still turned on, so I'm going to turn it off. Uh, so basically what you can see is that we've done is we made a mask with our selection. And we can confirm that by holding Alt on our keyboard and going into the mask view. As you can see, this is a perfect selection of what the hello text was. All right, uh, let's just delete this because I'm going to show you one more trick. Uh, I'm going to make the same selection again. So I have the selection of my text here. So if you want to have the mask in one click, but you want to have it inverted, I'm going to hold Alt or Option on my keyboard and then click on the mask button. And then basically you punch out a hole of your selection. So again, if we go back into this mask view now, you can see that this is now black on white, basically an inverted version of the mask that we had a little bit earlier in the video. All right. Uh, so yeah, one more thing. I'm going to do one more selection here. I'm just going to delete the text layer because we don't really need it anymore. Right, so one thing here uh, that I want to quickly show you, and that's how to invert masks. So if we press Command or Control-I on your keyboard, 
you will invert the mask. As you can see in the thumbnail here, this will change from black on white to white on black. Fairly easy and quick way to manipulate your mask, invert it. Uh, and again, I'm gonna go into mask view here. And this is basically what I'm doing here. Inverting all of the colors. And since the colors are black and white, it will just convert to their opposite. All right, so now we're gonna dive into the functions that you might not know if you are fairly new to Photoshop. But yeah, I've seen a couple of advanced Photoshoppers having uh, trouble with this or not realizing that this is possible. Anyways, there's a lot of freedom in actually transforming and manipulating these masks because they actually, eventually, when it boils down to it, uh, function as an actual Photoshop layer, just like a rasterized layer that you will use every day in Photoshop. If we take a closer look here at the right in the uh, layer menu, you can see this link button. You can actually click this. And if you click it, you can see that it's gone. Basically, this means that the mask and the photo will uh, transform separately now because this is usually on. And if we want to transform this by pressing Command or Control T, if I make the picture bigger, the mask will scale with it, which is actually really convenient, but sometimes you just don't want that. So if we unlink this and I'm going to select the mask here in the layer menu. So if I press Command T, you can actually see that I can now manipulate the mask without affecting the background picture. So I can stretch out this type, for example. And yeah, the mountain will still be fine. And again, if we go into the mask view by holding Alt or Option and clicking on the mask thumbnail, you can actually see that we are just manipulating this layer. All right, another really convenient function that took me a little bit to uh, actually learn of is that you can copy and drag masks really easily. Um, so the way you can do that is by holding Alt or Option on your keyboard. In the layer menu, just drag it over to the layer that you want to mask out again, like this. And now you just have a duplicate of this mask on another layer. So that's also really convenient, especially when you're working with a lot of layers where they have to be masked in the same way. And a cool thing, for example, is that you can also uh, invert this now. So if we press Command I, the uh, text will only be visible in the uh, opposite parts of the other mask. So yeah, I'm gonna also do a quick breakdown of how I made this mask here. So I'm just gonna delete it. And on this mountain range, I'm just gonna make a new mask. It's white. So a nice thing is that you can also uh, use the clouds filter in a mask. Uh, so we're gonna go to filter, render clouds. And as you can see, if we go to the mask view here, we now render these clouds filters um, as a part of the layer mask of the mountains. Uh, something that's really cool is that you can actually also transform these clouds. Again, if we unlink these and press command T on a keyboard, you can stretch this out in the vertical axis. And as you can see, we now have this like super vague, uh, noisy texture over our uh, picture as a mask. Because if we go back into the mask view, this is what we have. Uh, you can do the same with paths, filling it in uh, and yeah, customizing it. But the coolest part is that you can also use other filters in uh, the mask layer here. For example, if we go to filter, blur, Gaussian blur, it's also possible to blur these out and soften up the edges. Another possibility is using adjustment layers. So for example, again, we do all this with uh, the mask selected here. I'm gonna go to image, adjustments, levels. And now we can up the contrast of the mask here. So if we drag these in, actually upping the contrast here. So I'm gonna do this again, but then into the mask view. So this is what we have. Again, we're going to go to Image, Adjustments, Levels. And basically, we're going to make the darker parts darker and the lighter parts lighter. Uh, so what you might have seen now is that the mask doesn't necessarily have to consist of uh, either black and white colors. It can also contain gray values. And basically, what these gray values do, for example, these here. Uh, well, basically, if it's 50% gray, it's going to be 50% uh, opacity. And if it's 100% uh, gray, basically meaning black, uh, it's going to be invisible. And if it's white or 0% gray, it's going to be visible. All right. Uh, knowing this, we can just up the contrast, basically removing a lot of the uh, gray areas, uh, making the edges a little bit harsher. And if you go out of the mask mode, you can now see that these kind of look like, I don't know, scratches or something like that. Um, you can also make it super harsh by going to adjustments threshold basically giving us only black and white values. 
All right, so uh, the last thing that I want to show you is actually how to apply this uh, in a more hands-on kind of way. Uh, because this is actually a super, super useful function. Uh, let's say that we have this apple here and it's not cut out properly. Uh, as you can see, there is a blue edge around uh, the apple from the background. And we kind of want to adjust it a little bit. So if you go into the mask mode, you can just see that the edges are a little bit soft. And this is something that we can manipulate it with. Basically, we're going to select the apple here. And what we're going to do is I'm just going to go into mask view to show you what I'm actually going to do to the mask. I go filter, blur, Gaussian blur. And the more I blur this, as you can see, the softer the edge will be, but also the more gray values will be in between the black and the white. As you can see, the bigger this will become, the more gray colors uh, will be fading in between black and the white color. I don't need this much, but yeah, I'm just gonna go with, I don't know, maybe like 10 pixels. All right, so going back into the normal view, you can actually see that the edge has been softened up. But as we showed you in the other example, we can basically make the gray values either lighter or darker by using a levels adjustment. So going back into the mask again, go to image, adjustments, levels. And what we basically can do is if we drag in this left slider, we're gonna make this image darker. And this image is gonna get darker, uh, basically picking the gray values, so the edge here, and it's gonna make those gray values slightly darker every time. So the more of these gray values that turn darker, basically the more this mask will shrink, if you can see. We can also do it the other way around. If we drag in the right slider, all of these gray areas will become white instead of black. Basically expanding the mask. So I'm gonna do this one more time, but then in the normal view. So we're gonna image, adjustments, levels. And we're gonna drag in the darker slider. And as you can see, not only will the mask shrink, but also the edges will get harder. Like this. And there are exceptions to this because this will not fix all of your problems, as you can see here. Uh, this is something that's been caused by the Gaussian blur. Anyways, uh, this is a good way to manipulate your masks uh, and see if you can control the edge uh, where it should be if you make a mistake or something like that. Uh, so yeah guys, I hope this opened up a lot of possibilities for you. Uh, for example, what we can do is uh, we can just go and blur this thing out. Maybe do like uh, 30 pixels. And we can go to pixelate, mosaic. And we can pixelize the mask. Can also get some cool wacky results from that. Maybe not for this, but let's just go and do a solid color, red. And as we learned in this tutorial, by holding Alt or Option on keyboard, we can drag over the mask. So we now have this pixelated uh, red mask. And I don't know, maybe we want these to be hard edges. So we're gonna go to image, adjustments, threshold. And we now have this pixelized mask of a color uh, in a matter of seconds. Uh, yeah. So yeah, guys, these are just some of the possibilities that you can do with masks. Uh, I hope I encouraged you to explore what the possibilities are because you can get some really cool experimenting stuff with, done with it. Yeah, it's just that for me personally, uh, I never really found out that the, these possibilities were there. So that's why I want to do this video for you guys. Uh, so yeah, I hope this was useful. So before the end of the video, I just want to give a quick shout out to all of my Patreons. Uh, my Patreons basically support me, making me be able to make more videos for you guys. So if you don't know, if you become a Patreon, you get access to all of the project files from all of my tutorials, a 15% discount in my asset web store, and an exclusive Discord rule. If you go one tier up, you'll also get access to the full episodes of me starting a clothing brand and all the assets and project files that come with that series. So yeah, big thanks to all of my Patreons. If you want to become one, there's a link in the description. If you have any questions, feel free to leave them down in the comments below or you can join us on Discord. If this video was useful to you, please consider subscribing and leaving a like because it will really help out the channel. Alright, with all of that being said, thank you so much for watching. This was Tom from Dreadlabs tuning out and I'll see you guys in the next video.